Uh, I thank, thank my friend from Texas. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I am I'm so honored to be here on International Holocaust Remembrance Day with colleagues, Democrat and Republican alike, who understand the importance, <coughs> excuse me, understand the importance of giving real meaning to the words never again. Standing at Auschwitz-Birkenau, as we did with a bipartisan delegation last week, what you can't help but be struck by is the effort, the enormous effort that the Nazis went to to try to destroy the Jewish people to wipe them from the face of the earth. And yet, they failed. The state of Israel is strong, the strong homeland of the Jewish people. And in a world that Adolf Hitler could never have imagined, the Nazis could never have imagined, Jewish members of the House, like myself, have the opportunity, like the one now, to remind America why this is so important. Like my colleague from Florida, Congresswoman Washington Schultz, I represent a lot of survivors. And twice a year, our local Jewish Family Service Organization has a program called Cafe Europa. And they bring together the survivors from our community for lunch and the opportunity to socialize and to enjoy music and to be with one another. And they sit the survivors at tables based on the communities in Europe that they came from, communities where the Nazis tried to eradicate all the Jews. And here they are now, most in their 90s, coming together, in this case in South Florida, with the opportunity to be with one another. And what's so remarkable is that on virtually every one of these meetings, there is a moment where a survivor from a community in Europe is able to reunite with another survivor from that community that he or she has not seen since before World War II. And they have the chance to share their stories, not just with each other, but they get to share their stories with all of us. Some, like Norman Fragman, who is a dear, dear friend of mine, who lost 126 family members in the Holocaust, was clear when he said after, in speaking about Cafe Europa, he said, we are disappearing, but when I see faces here, it does my heart good. There are still witnesses to this tragedy, and younger generations must learn of these atrocities that occur when hatred toward one another occurs. We must replace hate with love. Norman is right. And Sylvia Richter, also from South Florida, also at a Cafe Europa said this, in describing what happened to her, she said, my sisters and I were chosen by Dr. Mengele. I was forced to lie about my age and say I was 17 instead of 14. A female Nazi officer wiped black soot off her arm and told me it, and told me it was my mother, father, and siblings that she was wiping away, and if I didn't keep lying, this would be me too. As she wiped away those ashes, Sylvia said, she wiped away my smile. I never smiled again until 1946. There are people in America, there are people in the world who deny the Holocaust. There are far too many people who don't know the details of what happened during the Holocaust, and sadly, these voices these survivors will not be with us for too many more years. That's why this is so important today. That's why it's so important for all of us to come together to pledge never again and to make it mean something. Mr. Speaker, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here today with my colleagues from both sides of the aisle. There is nothing partisan about standing up to hatred and bigotry 